See, some people really get off on being a part of big number churches. And, and I, I understand. I mean, well, I don't really understand because I've always been a part of small number churches. I, it just always, always, always. The pastor just pick you out, you know, and just, just read your mail. And just, but he says, hey, 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 homie, homie, should, shouldn't you be careful with looking at the number of people that are coming? Keep going. Why should he be a cause of guilt in Israel? Nevertheless, the king's word prevailed against Joab. Therefore, Joab departed and went throughout all Israel and came to Jerusalem. Then Joab gave the sum of all the number of the people of David. All Israel had 1,100,000 men who drew the sword, and Judah had 470,000 men wow. who drew the sword. Stop there. Look at all those numbers. Look at all those numbers of people, and yet God now is... God now is rebuking David. Remember when David was had just his band of a few hundred? He had his band of a few hundred men, and he's going out to war, and he's doing all these battles, and he's making all this, taking all this ground. He even fought for the Philistines. He was doing all these things, and God was there to protect him and help him. Now David is king, and he starts numbering, and as he's numbering then, he realizes, he says, I've got all these thousands of men, and then God steps in and rebukes him. It's all about attitude. Keep reading. But he did not count Levi and Benjamin among them, yeah. for the king's word was abominable to Joab, and God was displeased with this thing. Therefore, he struck Israel. Stop. God was displeased with this thing. Now, let me tell you, I really identify with this because over the last few years, I really struggled in the numbers. I really struggled in the numbers. Now, I want you to follow me now. Change starts at the head, but death starts at the feet. Okay? I really struggled in the numbers. And then God comes in and says, now I got to rebuke you. Now I'm displeased with you, so now I got to do something to shake you up. Keep reading. So David said to God, I have sinned greatly because I have done this thing. But now, I pray, take away thine iniquity of your servant, for I have done very foolishly. Then the Lord spoke to David's seer, saying, Go and tell David, saying, Thus says the Lord, I offer you three things. Choose one of them for yourself, that I may do it to you. So God came to David and said to him, Thus says the Lord, Choose for yourself, either three years of famine or three months to be defeated by your face by your foes with the sword of your enemies overtaking you, or else for three days the sword of the Lord, the plague in the land, with the angel of the Lord destroying throughout all the territory. So then God comes and says, now let me punish you. You think God don't punish me? You think that God don't come in and just shake my world up? Every time I make a mistake, God throw me in the corner. Every time I do something wrong, God just corrects me. At the, at the, I mean, I do something wrong on a Wednesday, and God catches me by Friday. Just catch me up. Just, what, what are you doing? My, 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 my little behind is so tan red. Uh, but you know what? When you are a good, when you when you are a good student, when you're a good child, when you're a good, then you you receive the discipline. You enjoy the. You say, you know what, Lord, clean me out, make me right. So then he said, so he says, I'm gonna do these things to you. And you know what? It hurt me so bad to lose numbers. It hurt me so bad to lose people. It hurts me so bad when people don't come back. It hurts me so bad when they promise they're coming and they don't come. It used to, it used to hurt me so bad. And God said, you're missing my point. You, you, you're so worried about those who didn't come that you're missing those who did come. Mm, talk to me, church. Talk to me. You're not realizing the quality of people that I've given you in short numbers because your mind is on something different. And he comes and he punishes. Okay, keep reading. Now consider what answer I should take back to him who sent me. 13. And David said to God, I am in great distress. Please let me fall into the hand of the Lord, for his mercies are very great, but do not let me fall into the hand of man. So the Lord sent a plague upon Israel, and 70,000 men of Israel fell. Listen, they died. 70,000 people died. Let me tell you what happened. You know what? Just, just you being disobedient can cause your whole family yeah. to be in pain. Right. Your whole family can be hurt just because God called you and asked you to do something and you were disobedient and God does something to your family. God does something to my family. God does something to this church. God does every time. So I got to, and boom! He says, all right, let me, let, me, let me show you. Okay, so keep reading. And God sent an angel to Jerusalem to destroy it. As he was destroying, the Lord looked and relented of the disaster and said to the angel who was destroying, it is enough. Now so, restrain your hand. Stop there. So the angel of the Lord was killing these people. Not the devil. Who do you 
think causes the storms in your life? Who do you think's in the clouds and the thunder and the lightning and the rain and in the waves? It's God, man. The Bible says that the devil does not touch you without God's permission. God uses the devil as a tool to come in and mess with your mind and your heart to get you back on course, to discipline you in disobedience. If he lets you just go and do whatever you want to do, you wouldn't last two minutes. Now, this is the word. This is the Bible. It's not my Bible. I didn't write that. I don't want your money. I don't want that. If it was my Bible, I would tell us all, let's go get drunk or let's go get high and we'll all go to heaven no matter what. Let's drive without insurance and out without driver's licenses. I don't care. Let's do whatever feels good to our body. If I wrote a Bible, that's what it would be. Hey, let's all do whatever we want. Treat people however we want. But it's not my Bible. It's not my rule. And I'm under the same subjection that you are. And I want to be what God wants me to be. So I have to be obedient according to his rules. And his rules are that if you get off track and if you blink your eyes and turn the other way, I'm going to spank you until you're corrected. Amen. And the angel of the Lord stood by the threshing floor of Ornan, the Jebusite. Then David lifted his eyes and saw the angel of the Lord standing between earth and heaven, having in his hand a drawn sword stretched out over Jerusalem. So David and the elders, clothed in sackcloth, fell on their faces. So David realizes he's sinned against God. And he realizes that it's God's angel that is destroying all these men with the sword. You know what? I would rather face the devil with God on my side than face God with no one on my side. Can you say amen? At least if I have to deal with the devil, if at least I have to deal with sickness, if at least I have to deal with bitterness, hatred, suicide, homicide, if I got to deal with those, at least I got God on my side to get me through. But the moment you disobey God and you got to face God all by yourself, you better know, you better know that nobody got your back. I would be like this. I'd be like, let's go. God wants you. <laughs> I, yeah, I can work with you. I, I ain't never had any of my siblings ever say, I'll take it for you, brother. No, no way. So I'll take it for you. I'll take it for you. No, okay, so keep reading. We're almost done. And David said to God, Was it not I who commanded the people to be numbered? I am the one who has sinned and done evil indeed. But these sheep, what have they done? Let your hand, I pray, O Lord, my God, be against me and my father's house, but not against your people, that they should be plagued. Stop there. Wouldn't that be nice? Wouldn't that be nice that every time we messed up that God didn't affect the whole, it didn't affect the whole family? Wouldn't it be nice when, 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 when Pastor Amy got sick with cancer, wouldn't it be nice if she just dealt with it all by herself, just went away for a while, dealt with it? But we had, to, we had to see the looks on her face. We had to see her, uh, her hair fall out. We had to see all these. Wouldn't that have been nice if she could just dealt with it by herself? Wouldn't it have been nice that if every time I got in trouble, my dad didn't have to go to the police station and, and bond me out? Wouldn't that have been nice if they didn't have to worry about where I was and who was hurting me? Wouldn't that have been nice? Wouldn't it have been nice that, you know what, I'm the one that sinned. I'm the one that messed up. And don't let nobody else get hurt over my wouldn't it be nice if there was no victims every time we messed up, that no one else got hurt, every time that every time that we cheated or that we lied or that we stole or that we said a bad something or we cursed over somebody? Wouldn't it be nice if nobody else was affected except for us when it came time to punishment? But no. If we are all driving in my car and I'm the driver and I miss the exit, you all miss the exit. Right? You don't, you don't get to just... So David says, what? He says, you're just saying. God says, no, 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 no. I, I, you know what? The other day, other day uh, uh, I, uh, we were working on, on, on one of the cars, and my son, he, I don't know what he was doing, but it smashed my finger, and it made it bleed. I said, oh, and even my toes curled. <laughs> <laughs> it was like this. And it, yeah! A little tear came out, and I, it's bleeding. You ever bleed your own blood? I mean, just bleed your own blood. Oh, but my whole body hurt. It was like a, you know? That's how it works in, in, in this body, in, in Christ's body. You know, every time I hear of a pastor messing up on television, it affects all of us. It affects all of us. Why? Because we're one body. So David's trying to take this. It doesn't work, so keep reading. 
Therefore the angel of the Lord commanded Gad to say to David that David should go and erect an altar to the Lord of the threshing floor of Ornan the Jebusite. So David went up to the word of, went up at the word of, God, this, of Gad, this, which this. he had spoken in the name of the Lord. Now Ornan turned and saw the angel and his four sons who were with him hid themselves. But Ornan continued threshing wheat. So David came to Ornan, and Ornan looked and saw David. And he went out from the threshing floor and bowed before David with his face to the ground. Yep. Then David said to Ornan, Grant me the place of this threshing floor, that I may build an altar on it to the Lord. You shall grant it to me at the full price that may that the plague may be withdrawn. Grant it to me at the full price that the plague may be lifted. Keep reading. But Ornan said to David, Take it to yourself and let thy lord the king do what is good in his eyes. Look, I also give you the oxen for burnt offerings. Stop right there. Ornan says, don't buy it from David says, I want to buy this threshing floor from you. And I want to pay full price for it. And Ornan says, no, no, no. He says, I'll give it to you. And not only will I give it to you, but I'll give you the animals to sacrifice upon the altar. And David says, no. So keep reading. David says, no, I don't want it for free. The threshing implements for wood and the wheat for the grain offering, I give it all. Then David said to Ornan, no, but I will surely buy it for the full price, for I will not take what is yours for the Lord, nor offer burnt offerings with that which costs me nothing. Stop there. I will not offer God something that does not cost me anything. God always wants something from us. Now, if we were not in a money society, if we were not in a, in a now, if they, you know what, you know, if my landlord would, would say, you know what, listen, you don't have the money today, give me a word of prophecy, and I'll let you live there for another month. I would be like, I'd be like, thus say the Lord. I, you know, I'd be, I'd be like, sweating, playing hands on him. I'd be like, in the name of Jesus, put your, put your kids on the phone, and Jesus, I'm going to bless them too. But he don't want, he don't want my word. And it's, but the moment that I pay my rent and I pay it on time, then I could call him and say, by the way, the kitchen sink don't work right. By the way, you got to come and fix the sprinkler system. By the way, the garage, because now it's giving me an authority. It's putting me on a level because it cost me something. It wasn't given to me. Has anybody ever gave you something and it didn't work? And then you're like, oh, what do you do, give it back? <laughs> no. You feel, you feel obligated. You feel like, oh, it didn't, oh. You can give you a microwave and it don't work. It's like, hey, you better bring me back a working microwave. You gave me one that don't work. No. You just, you're just appreciative for the thought. And, but you go to Target and you buy one and it don't work, but you put your money on the table, you be like, excuse me, Target, you better give me a new one. As a matter of fact, I might not even take that, you give me my money back, I'll go buy Walmart. <laughs> right? Yeah. When you give something to God, and it costs you something, it connects you to him closer because it's a sacrifice and God moves in sacrifices. He don't move in dead. So don't bring God, don't bring God something dead. You know, he said in his word, don't bring me no dead animal. Bring me a live, kicking, screaming animal. Give me an animal that's trying to run away. Don't give me one that is, is blind or that is crippled or can't or is lame. Don't bring me none of that. Bring me something good. Bring me a moving one, a yelling one, a stomping one, a dead one, a crying one, a moving one, because when I lay it on the altar and it costs you something and it's alive and it means something, whoa, look out for God bless you. I finished reading. David refuses. So David gave Ornan 600 shekels of gold by weight for the place. And David built there an altar to the Lord and offered burnt offerings and peace offerings and called on the Lord, and he answered him from heaven by fire on the altar of burnt offering. So the Lord commanded the angel and returned first his sword off, to there. his first off, First off, the Lord accepts his offering. The Lord accepts his sacrifice. The Lord accepts what he is giving to him. And as soon as God accepts it, he answers by fire. And fire comes down and consumes the sacrifice. And then David says what? We'll, we'll go on from there. So the Lord commanded to the angel and returned his sword to its sheath. At the time, 
At that time, when David saw that the Lord had answered him on the threshing floor of Ornan, the Jebusite, he sacrificed.